Praise the name of the Lord. But before we go into what we have for the day, just a few tips about Thanksgiving. When the prayer started, it was with Thanksgiving. It was to show that we must give thanks to the Lord. Then in the process of worship, is to praise, to praise the holy name of our Lord. To exalt him and to give him thanks. Brethren, let's continue in thanksgiving. In thanksgiving to our Lord. What that does is to immediately acknowledge what Jehovah has done. Amen. Thank God whether you see it or not. You know what I mean? Whether it happens or not, give God thanks because it must happen. That's the counsel. That's the mind of God for you and I. In Psalm 92 verse 1, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. It says it is a good thing. It is good. If you want to do good things in your day, give thanks. Give thanks to the Almighty. It is a good thing. That's the scripture. Hallelujah. Now, in verse 2, it says, to show forth thy loving kindness. As you give thanks, what shows forth, what unveils is the loving kindness of our great God. Amen. His love to you. You will in no shape or form feel short change in the love of God. It will be a common reality in your life, the love of the Father. Many commit suicide, many uh, feel very uncomfortable because they fall short. They seem to fall short of the loving kindness of our great God. But one thing is sure, God loves you. And once you praise him, it unveils his loving kindness in the morning. Then, and thy faithfulness every night when it's dark. His faithfulness shows up. Why? Because he gives thanks. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Psalm 50 verse 23. Just the importance of thanksgiving. Yesterday, we saw this. It says in verse 23, Whoso offereth praise, who, whosoever offereth praise, glorified me. Now, you think it's an easy thing to glorify God? It's so easy. God makes it so easy. Just praise Him. You glorify Him. Glorifies him. What does it mean to glorify? You know, it's, it means kabab. Hallelujah. Amen. It means to make rich, to be wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen. To make heavy. In the name of Jesus, to be honored. Whoso offered praise glorified me. Now, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. So, as you offer praise, let our lifestyle be a life of praise to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when we are praising God here, please do nothing else. Do nothing else. Whether you are the equipment, whether you are here, Praise the Lord. Let your lips praise the name of the Lord. Or whether you are sitting down there, praise him. Because whosoever offered praise does what glorified me. That glory goes to Jehovah. And to him that orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. May God show you his salvation every day. Amen. The fullness of light. The word comes and delivers you. We live in a, 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 a terrible world. God 
even make it so. But man had decided to make the world look like this. But he that order it, you must order your conversation. Speak to your conversation. Your conduct. Your conduct, your conduct, your speech, you speak to it. All right, you must do it right in the name of Jesus. Will I show? God says he will show you what? His salvation. Look, don't limit God's salvation. Salvation is, is pure, it's simple, it's glorious, it's deliverance from darkness, it's freedom. And that leads us into what we are going to be discussing today in continuation of what we discussed before I, uh, I was away. That was rest. Amen. Amen. Psalm 103, verse 5. Psalm 103, verse 5. Praise the name of the Lord. 103, verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? Remember, he says it is a good thing to give thanks. So what's the good thing here? Thanksgiving. Who satisfies thy mouth what? With good things. And what is thanksgiving? You give him thanks because of what he has done. You give him thanks for what you know of him and what you've received of him, even though you have it, whether you have it or not. Once you give thanks, it means it is coming. Sure, as daylight comes, as there must be daylight tomorrow, it will surely come. Because you give thanks. Who satisfied thy mouth? One, there will be satisfaction Amen. in your mouth. Amen. With what? Good things. And thy youth is renewed, what? Like the eagles. Because your mouth speaks good things. Your youth is renewed. Health. Grace. Dominion. Fulfillment of prophecy upon your life. The prophetic word. Moving in the dimension that God has called you. The opening of the heavens to you. He satisfies your mouth. You must speak it out. With good things. So that your youth, in the name of Jesus, in this body, whether you are listening to me online or not, know assuredly that your youth will be renewed what? Like an eagle. Like an eagle. Amen. Because of what? What is in your mouth? Thanksgiving. Good things. Good things is in your mouth. Amen. Learn to praise God. So when we come here to praise God, let it be that you praise God. Amen. Let it be that you indeed worship. Don't be distracted by anything because we're coming here to praise God. Mm. Give him all your shots. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. But what said it in Psalm in Romans 10:8? The one denying is in the It's in your mouth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's ninety. It's with these in your mouth. And it says, it's the word of faith. Amen. Which we preach. So this word. Is a word of faith. When you speak it, it will generate faith. Amen. It will, whether you believe it or speak it, you may not if you speak it, speak it. It will look like idle words to you. Speak it. Amen. Amen. When the time comes, as the Spirit of God broods over your water, you will quicken that word because He spoke it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. He says, let no corrupt word proceed from your mouth. Let no, I read it yesterday, I looked, let no corrupt word. Check your, check your past week. Have you spoken any corrupt word? Let is a law. Let no corrupt word proceed from your mouth. But rather, what is good. What is good? Say, so, Lord, shaping me to speak only what is good. 
for the use of building up. When you speak Jesus, when you speak his word, what is he used to do? To build up. Amen. It builds you. It builds your hearer. It builds the environment around you. Hallelujah! So that it may confer a benefit on the hearer. So, I am one who comes with benefit. I'm loaded with benefits from on her. And when I speak it, I confer benefit. Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord. Let God be magnified. Now we're going to the word for today. Lord, we bless your name. We receive your word with thanksgiving. As we look into your rest, help us. Help us. Help us to enjoy the rest of the Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, I was struggling to title it, but let's continue with what we listened to two weeks ago. And um, that was from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Hebrews 4. From verse 1. It says, let us. So, let's decide together. Let us, therefore, fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. That's not going to be our lot. We have people pressing on to the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. For unto us was the gospel preached. The gospel is preached to you to me, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Now, for we which have believed do enter into rest. And that's where we're going to. Because you have believed, you have done what? Enter into rest. But do you really believe it? Yes, you should believe it. Because the word of the Lord says it. Because you have believed. You have entered into rest. We need rest because this world is a place of turbulence. We need rest because we need to overcome. We need rest because Jesus himself is rest. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I will give you rest. He said, learn of me. Learn of me. When you come, that's what we are doing here. We are learning of Jesus. There's no other thing we learn of but Jesus. Learn of me. Hallelujah. Learn of me. Amen. See, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So you must make it a duty to learn of Jesus. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give, it's a sure word, I will give rest. Now, he says, For we which have believed do enter into rest. The moment you believe you've entered into Christ, and Christ is in you, and please let's allow Christ to do his work in us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. If it's not so, it's going to be a little bit more turbulent. I'm not going to stay on that, you know, so that we move fast. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 14, it says, Now, why the turbulence? Follow peace with all men. Follow peace. You must. Be determined to live a life of peace. 
because it's the God of peace that will crush Satan under your foot shortly. Satan is under our feet because we are coming to rest. Because Jesus defeated him on the cross of Calvary and gave us the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace and holiness. Peace and holiness. Let your life be devoid of trouble. Peace and holiness. Now he says in verse 15, looking diligently, so we must be determined, it must be um, something we initiate ourselves. Looking diligently, lest any man fail. There's a possibility for some man to fail, not you and I. The word you hear will transform you as you respond to the word. Fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defied. You are in control of your environment. You are in control of yourself by reason of the word you receiving the, uh, the, the engrafted word of truth with meekness, with control. When you allow the word of God to do its job in your life or my life, you know what? I will not fear of the grace of God. There will be no, I'm not even talking about bitterness, the root of it. The root. So if you are bitter for anything, whether bitter against God, or bitter against a neighbor, or bitter against a sister or brother, just repent now if you want to move forward. Springing up trouble, springing up trouble you, you see, it gives trouble. It takes away rest. Thereby, you know what? That person doesn't go down alone. He begins to infect others. Thereby, many be defiled. Then, in verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears. Some key things here. As we proceed in this journey, the essence of the journey is the blessing. Go check Abraham. There's no time. Abraham. Who became Abraham? That what he says, blessing, I bless, I bless you. Now, the blessing of God, let it make it abundantly clear by reason of the word, is not material. The blessing of God is not material, is not cars, is not houses. Because those are the things the Gentiles seek, and those things will pursue you. That's the law. That is not what we are to seek. Some people have three cars, four cars, two houses, and say, God has blessed me. Fine. You worked hard. You worked hard. Because the man who doesn't even believe in God, he works hard and he gets those things. What's the difference? So the blessings of God are not material. They are not. Once you remove, you have that mindset that the blessing of God is spiritual, then you can shape in your course. Understand this road and know the Jesus you are serving. That doesn't mean God is not going to bless you. He said, he said, seek ye first. The priority to seek in this life is first, what? The God. kingdom of God. God. Then he said, all other things will be what? Are dead. They will come as additions. They are not things we seek. They come as what? Additions. When God called Abraham, Abraham had money. He was rich. His neighbors were rich. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, these were rich persons. But that was not their calling. 
Their calling was not to be rich in, in material things. Those things were additions. Confirmation that I'm with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, what is the blessing? We won't have time to go into it. Now, it was the blessing that um, Esau lost. He says, how did he lose it? He said, he sold his birthright. Then he said, for ye, in 17, for ye now know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. So two things, birthright and blessing. The birthright is what you must fight for. Your birthright. The birthright comes with as surely as you have the birthright, you must have the blessing. The blessing follows your acknowledgement of your birthright in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So read that 17 again. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. So the blessing is for us to inherit. But we already have it. It needs to be unveiled. Can you put uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse, I think from verse 14 to 16. Let's watch it here. Uh, Paul was writing. I'm profited in the Jews' religion above many, my equals, in my own nation, being more exceeding zealous. Now, Raphael was talking in the morning over zealousness. Ex exceeding zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to do what? To reveal the son in me. That's the blessing. The son of God must be revealed in me. That I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I convert not with flesh and blood. Now, note this. The essence of your call is what? To reveal Jesus in us. That's the, the, the essence of our calling. And you must know of your birthright to inherit the blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 